Okay, in this video, we are going to look at the Pro Mini. Now, the Pro Mini is the smallest Arduino board. It was originally designed by SparkFun, and now it's open source, so it's easy to obtain online. Now, there's two flavors of the Pro Mini. There's a 5-volt, 16 megahertz version, which you can see on my breadboard, and there's a 3.3-volt, 8 megahertz version, and they look the same, same footprint. So if you're working with 3.3 volt peripherals like a HC06 Bluetooth module or if you're working with a LoRa radio you could just drop in a 3.3 volt version and it will be compatible to your peripherals. Now for big projects you could use the Mega it's AT2560 and then there's the Uno if you're familiar with that and then there's the Nano. Now the Pro Mini is basically a Nano with the USB connector removed and the ICSP programming header removed and it doesn't have the USB to serial chip on the back either FTDI or CH340 so the Pro Mini is a whittled down version of the Nano so I use that for my final board that I'm using in my project I usually do my development on a Uno or a Nano like this one here I'm actually working on a DTMF decoder so I'm using a Nano to interface with my DTMF decoder then in the final project, the final board, I'll just drop in a Pro Mini. Now the program, the Pro Mini, if you want to upload a hex file, then you have to get an external ICSP connector. You can see here. Now these connectors don't fit into a breadboard, so I made a little adapter. So it's a two-row header, and I connected it up to an eight-pin dip socket. And then I wired it up into the Pro Mini so I could actually upload a hex file. So I upload my fourth operating system using this, uh, th this connector. And then I put a, a female header on the Pro Mini. Now usually it comes with a 90 degree header like this that you plug in, but I put a female header in there. So I could plug in an FTDI module like that and then plug this into my computer. Now I've got access to the serial port and I could upload my program. Okay, the first thing that I do when I start my Pro Mini project, I get out my AVR programmer and connect it up to my Pro Mini. Then I erase the microcontroller. I totally blank the microcontroller. So the Pro Mini is not an Arduino anymore. It's not a Pro Mini. It's just an ATmega 328P evaluation board. Then I load Flashforth into the microcontroller. That's my fourth programming language. And in Flashforth, there's a compiler, interpreter, and an assembler so I'm working right down to the bare metal so all I need is an FTDI module like this and I just plug it in to the Pro Mini and connect it up to my computer and run a serial terminal program like TerraTerm then all the development is done on board the microcontroller itself okay I have my ABR programmer connected to my Pro Mini and I'm powering my Pro Mini through my FTDI module, which is connected to my USB port through my computer. And I'm running AVR Studio. So if we go up to Tools and AVR Programming, you see there it sees my AVR ISP Mark II programmer. That's my tool. And the device is ATmega 328P. It's my microcontroller. So I apply that. Now I can read my ID. There's the ID of my microcontroller, so it comes up with an ID, and my target voltage is 4.8 volts. So look at my lock bits, it's FF, that's what I want. Look at my fuses, FF for extended, DA for high, and FF for low, so that's what I want. So I'll go to memory, and I checked erase device before programming, so it's going to totally blank the microcontroller. Then I'm going to load flash forth onto the microcontroller. So I hit program. Now she's uploading Flashforth into the microcontroller. And at the very bottom you see verifying Flash OK. So now my Pro Mini is running forth and I could start doing development on my Pro Mini board. OK, I have my Pro Mini board powered up and it's running my fourth operating system. And I have my USB to serial FTDI adapter plugged into the Pro Mini board and that's connected to my USB port on my computer and I'm running a serial terminal program called TerraTerm so I could send commands into the Pro Mini board I could send a command to blink LED 
you can see the LED is blinking. I can send a command to stop blinking. And now I can send a command to turn on the LED. And I can send a command to turn off the LED. So now this board, the Pro Mini board, is not an Arduino because the bootloader has been erased. So now you could use the compiler and language of your choice to program your Pro Mini board. So next I'm going to give you a tour of the microcontroller on board the Pro Mini and we'll start off with a block diagram. Okay, here's the block diagram of the Atmega 320p microcontroller. If you look at the top, you can see the VCC and ground pins. So we could connect either 3.3 volts or 5 volts to power up the microcontroller. Now on the bottom, we can see the reset pin, which is connected to the reset button on the Pro Mini. And there's our crystal input pins. So we could attach either a 16 megahertz or an 8 megahertz crystal, depending on the power supply voltage that's applied to the microcontroller. Now the AVR microcontrollers are Harvard architecture, which means we could only execute programs in Flash. We cannot execute code in RAM or EEPROM. Now we have 1K of EEPROM, we have 32K of flash and we have 2K of RAM. Now the EEPROM and the flash memory are non-volatile, which means when we lose power, our data will be intact. But if we lose power, we'll lose our data in the RAM because the RAM is volatile memory. Now the EEPROM and flash are similar, but they have different characteristics. The EEPROM can handle 100,000 write erase cycles and the flash can only handle 10,000 write erase cycles. So the flash will wear out faster than the EEPROM. And the EEPROM is byte addressable, so it's easy to write and read a byte value to the EEPROM than it is to flash. It's a lot harder to write a single byte into the flash memory. So that's why they incorporated EEPROM on the microcontroller. Now if we look down to the peripherals, we can see all the peripherals in the microcontroller. We have our USART, that's our serial port, the SPI, TWI, which is our R-squared C bus. We have timer counters, and we have our analog to digital converter. And on the bottom, we have our GPIO, a port D, port B, and port C. And you notice port C only has seven outputs, as opposed to port B and port D, which have eight outputs. Now, all these peripherals that we see here, internally to the microcontroller, can be controlled by the special function I.O. registers. Now, there's 224 registers from hex 20 to hex FF in RAM. Now, we could go into those registers, and we could control any one of these uh, peripherals by addressing the registers and flipping uh, single bits in the 8-bit registers. So next we're going to have a look at these special function I.O. registers and how we could address them to control the peripherals of the microcontroller. Okay, next we are going to have a look at the special function I.O. registers. Now these I.O. registers control the internal peripherals of the microcontroller. Now there are 224 registers and their address is from hex 20 to hex FF and we're going to start at the bottom at hex 20. Now below hex 20 are the general purpose working registers and they're reserved for assembler programming. So I'll start at hex 20 and we'll go up the list. Now the first thing you see there are the three GPIO ports. There's port B, port C, and port D. And if you look at address hex 25, that's our port B output register. And if you go over to bit 5, that's port B bit 5, that is connected to the LED on the Pro Mini. So if we set this bit, that's port B pin 5, if we set it, we, we flip it to a logical 1, it will turn on the LED. And if we reset the bit, we flip it down to a logical 0, it will turn off the LED. Now right below it is the data direction register for port B, bit 5. So if we turn that on to high, port B, bit 5 will be an output. It will be configured as an output. So that's how we can control the GPIO pins. We could do that for either port B, port C, and port D. Now if we go up the list, you can see there's a lot of reserved registers, they're dithered out, they're grayed out. And if we actually read any of those registers, they'll read back a hex 60. And we'll see that later on. So if we go up the list, there's our EEPROM ad address registers, there's our timer counter 0, there's our SPI register, so we can control our SPI. Keep on going up. There's our ADC registers for analog to digital converters. There's timer counter registers to control the timer counters keep on going. There's more timer counters. There's our two-wire serial interface, which is our R squared C. There's our UART, our USART, which is our serial port. And we'll keep on going all the way. There we are at the top, FF. So it goes from hex 20 to FF. So any of these registers 
control all the peripherals internal to the microcontroller. So we could go into any of these registers and flip the bits accordingly and we could control any one of the internal peripherals to the microcontroller. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running in my computer and it's connected to my Pro Mini. And I've written some fourth words, I've written some fourth code to give me access to the internal workings of the microcontroller. So we could go inside and have a look around. So first of all, we'll go inside and have a look around at the flash. We'll do a data dump of the flash and have, have a look at the code that I just installed. So that's the code I just installed. And it's just going to show my code. It's not going to show all 32K bytes of flash. Otherwise, that would take forever. So we'll have a look at the EEPROM. We'll do a data dump. You can see it's pretty well empty. FF indicates uh, hasn't been written to. And we'll look at the RAM. So this is my 2K of RAM. It's a data dump. So we'll go to the top of RAM. Go to the very top. Right here. Now the first 32 bytes from here to here are the general purpose working registers. And that's reserved for assembly programming. Now if we look at from hex 20 to FF, that's the special function IO registers that we just had a look at on the data sheet. Now if you notice there's a lot of 60 values. Now hex 60 indicates a reserved register that's not being used. But all the registers can be used now to control the internal workings of the microcontroller. So if we go down to the bottom, now we want to turn on the LED on pin 13 on the Pro Mini. Now pin 13 is port B pin 5, so first of all we have to set the data direction register to make pin 13 an output. And that was on address hex 24. So we'll have a look at address hex 24. And it's all zero, and so we want to change bit 5 to a 1. So if we go bit 5, then address 24, set. Now if we look at address 24, you see bit 5 is set, so pin 13 now is an output. Now we want to turn on the LED, and that's on hex address 25. So we'll have a look at hex value 25 address and see it's all zero. So we want to turn on bit 5 to turn on the LED. So bit 5 of address 25 set. So now my LED just came on on my Pro Mini. And if I want to turn it off, I just go bit 5, 25, reset. And that turns off my LED. Okay, here's some simple assembler code written in fourth that will allow us to turn on or off the LED on pin 13 on the Pro Mini board. Now I'm going to use two assembler instructions. The first one is SBI, that's set bit in IO register. And the second instruction is CBI, that's clear bit in IO register. So the first fourth word that we create is called pin 13 output. And AS colon means this is an assembler. So we have our instruction SBI, set bit and IO register. That's at address 4 and bit 5. So bit 5 will be set. So that'll, that'll make pin 13 an output, configure it as an output. Our second fourth word is called LED on. And we're using set bit in IO register. That's at address 5 and that's bit 5. So bit 5 will be high, which will turn on the LED. And then the third fourth word is LED off. And we're using clear bit in I.O. register at address 5, bit 5. So bit 5 will be low, and I'll turn off the LED. So from now on at the OK prompt, we just have to type LED on. The LED will come on. And if we type LED off, the LED will turn off. OK, so that was my primer on direct register programming. And I just touched on the subject. I didn't want to make this video too long. So that's your bare metal programming. It's fast and efficient. And I use it together with fourth and assembler to make a very powerful technique to program my microcontroller. So I just wanted to make this video to show you my technique that I use to program microcontrollers.